Hi, I'm Jack Draper. Shout out to Quality Shot Tennis. Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. It is our Roland Garros Power Rankings update. It's version 3 so you can see version 2 on the screen and as always we're going to get through it. We're going to from 1 to 10 pick our most informed players and I'll explain the criteria very briefly for anyone that is new to these types of videos on the channel. Before we get into it though, remember that like button. Do subscribe if you're new and also do leave a rating or review if you're listening on a podcast platform. Uh, we've had a couple of tournaments down Madrid uh, with Alcaraz, uh, you know, coming out winning Madrid and then Monte Carlo, of course, Rublev won. Uh, we had a couple of tournaments in between that. Uh, the one week in between, Leovic won in Bosnia, uh, Runa won Munich, um, and then Alcaraz won Barcelona. So a lot of moving parts, uh, a lot of things going on as well. Uh, it's been an exciting few weeks and uh, I think, you know, some very eye-opening results as well. And as we go into Rome, uh, where I will do my final Roland Garros power rankings for ATP and WTA as well um, after Rome and a final list going into Roland Garros, uh, we are now in this, we're well within the clay court season. And Rome is, of course, arguably the best yardstick for Roland Garros, given that not only is it the tournament just before uh, the slam, but also it plays very similarly the actual surface and the conditions are similar to Paris and Roland Garros. Okay, let's explain then how we get into these power rankings. So uh, the main port of call, the main factor that we uh, take into account when doing these power rankings is current form. So what have you done for me lately, basically? Uh, you know, who has performed the best recently in the last few weeks, especially given that it's been clay court uh, tournaments recently and big, big clay court tournaments. Then we'll look at historical results at Roland Garros and at clay court tournaments, generally speaking. And that's really it, to be honest with you. That's really it. Uh, and that is the two things that we want to look at the most. Uh, so, and I guess you can say form as well this year. Uh, but of course, you know, surface form can be very surface dependent, depending on the player as well. So Djokovic was at number one. He's not going to stay at number one. He didn't play Madrid. So a little bit unfair, I guess you could say on him. But Alcaraz, since doing these rankings, has won two tournaments. He's won Madrid and also Barcelona. So I think he has to be up there. Number two, um, you know, we can get to in a second. I think, you know, for now, we can put Djokovic in there as a placeholder. Uh, he is going to be playing Rome. He is a defending champion. You know, we'll see how he gets on. Sinner. Sinner's had a very interesting uh, few weeks. He didn't play Madrid, so quite hard to know, you know, again, where he's going to be at. He is going to play Rome, but he pulled out of Madrid as well. Barcelona, he pulled out in the quarterfinals. Um, Massetti you know, got the, got that win and then Massetti lost to six pass in the semi-finals. But this list, actually, to be fair, is not going to change maybe as much as people think. Uh, but there's some big players who have been doing some big things recently or players, actually, that you might not think are big players doing big things. One of those is Jan Lennon Struff, and we'll get to him in a bit. But he, of course, made the final in Madrid, took Alcaraz the three sets on top of that, also made the quarterfinals of Monte Carlo losing to Rublev there. So he's had a bit of form uh, for someone like Hatchinov. He made, who's in the just outside, you can see on screen, he lost to Dan Evans in the Barcelona uh, round of 16, but then made the quarterfinals, losing to uh, Hatchinov. Beat Rublev, though, on, on route there. So that's a really good win against someone who's in great for form. Rublev made the final of the Bosnia Open after winning Monte Carlo, uh, losing to Lejevic in the final, uh, who, you know, I guess we could, we could say that he might be in here, but I don't think he's going to be on this list. So I think Rublev should replace Sinner, uh, in my opinion. I think, you know, he made round of 16, made a final of Bosnia, won Monte Carlo. It's got to be up there. Djokovic is a little bit of an asterisk next to him because it's not really a what have you done for me lately because he hasn't really played much tennis apart from the Bosnia Open where he lost to Lejevic. So do we actually put him there? Do we move him? I think maybe we've got to move him. We put Rublev there for now. We put Djokovic at three because, again, what we've done for me lately, but he, he's a bit of an exception because of his name and his status. I think everyone else he kind of put on a normal metric, but I think maybe Djokovic he can't. Uh, Nadal, of course, is injured. He, he won't be included in this version of our power rankings. Uh, you know, hopefully we see him back, but he won't be playing Rome either. So he, he won't be in 
uh, the power rankings, the final version of our power rankings going into Roland Garros, and hopefully he plays it, but remains to be seen about that as well. Uh, Yannick Sin, as I said, yeah, hasn't played much. Yeah, now, Holger Rune has... Holger Rune, sorry, even, has been a very interesting one. Uh, he lost in Madrid to Davidic Fagina in a final set tiebreak after winning a final set tiebreak against Bublik. Uh, he also won, though, the Munich Open. So I actually think, to be fair to him, he should probably be above Sinner because he... Not only did he play... Um, Madrid, and yes, of course, didn't win it, didn't go super far, but he won the Munich Open, which, you know, some good wins there. Valentin Schulp, O'Connell, Garin, Hanfman, you know, not obviously the the highest, highest of level players, but solid. Uh, Valentin Schulp also had match points in that, and Holger Rune somehow managed to come back, so he's clearly showing some real fight. Loss of Rublev, of course, in the Monte Carlo Masters. Semi beat Sinner in the... Sorry, final even of Monte Carlo. Lost to Rublev after being a breakup in the third set. And beat Sinner in the semi-finals. Uh, also Medvedev as well. Beat him and Dominic's team. That's a really good run there as well. In terms of Taylor Fritz. So how's Taylor Fritz looked? Um, I mean, Taylor Fritz has looked okay. I think, you know, I was a little bit underwhelmed with his... Uh, Madrid Open performance. Beat O'Connell, which was a good win. He's been in some decent form. Christian Guerin as well, clay court specialist. And then Zhang, um, you know, he lost two tiebreakers. Zhang had a career best tournament. Fine. Uh, I think you can maybe keep him there at six for now. Uh, but he needs, you know, I don't think he's safe there unless he has some good results. And then Sissipas made the quarterfinals uh, of Madrid. So not terrible for him. I think we can move him above Medvedev. Medvedev didn't have a particularly good uh, Madrid. He lost to Karatsev. And yeah, I think this past loss to Yan and Struff in three sets is a really, really good match. Struff went on to win the final, so that loss now doesn't look as bad. Uh, but he beats the Pat Morales, Baez, good clay court and Dominic team. In three sets as well. That was a really good match. Dominic team played some really good tennis actually in the end as well. Barcelona made the final there. Um, so actually, do, maybe we should have. I think we should have sets about higher actually. Final and then quarter final in Madrid. I think we actually have them above Sinner. And then we just move him up to five. Sinner at six, I think, and then Fritz at seven. I think that's probably about right. And then Medvedev. Now, Medvedev has been an interesting case because, you know, I thought maybe he'd show some decent form. He's shown some okay form. Beat Vavasori, Shevchenko, um, uh, the two players that he should be beating. And then lost to Karatsev in straight sets in the round of 16 in Madrid. Lost in the quarterfinals of Monte Carlo in straight sets. Didn't play a match. Sorry, didn't play a tournament in between. So round of 16 quarterfinal. There's eight sound about right. <sighs> maybe for now, I think we can probably give him the benefit of the doubt but I think he might I wouldn't be surprised if he drops out of my power rankings uh come the end of the uh of the cycle uh Monte Carlo for Zverev lost to Daniel Medvedev of course round of 16 lost in the first round of Munich and the Madrid round of 16 nine's probably about right in honesty I don't think he's going to be any higher and then Lorenzo Massetti um you know, Madrid Open lost in the first round, though. Barcelona semi final, Monte Carlo quarter final. I think mean, he kind of just clings on at 10. Now, Jan Alistroff is an interesting one. I think we need to talk about whether he should be included or not, whether he's just outside, because he made the final in Madrid, which is a really good performance, of course. Now, in Munich, he lost in the first round fine. But then at Monte Carlo, he made the quarterfinals, and he beat Kasper Rude. Really good win. Alex de Mineur, Ramos Vanolas, Rusevori, and Varillas on the way to that quarterfinal in Monte Carlo. Madrid, he beat Karatsev, Sitsipas, Kachin, Leovic, and Shelton. I think he should be in there. Um, and I don't know, should he be in there instead of Zverev? I reckon he should be. I Medvedev even. Oh, I mean... He's got to be in there. I think Mossetti's in there for sure. Um, I think you know Mossetti's in there because he made a semi-final 
and made a quarter final. Well, Medvedev's made a quarter final and a round of 16. Zverev's made two round of 16s. I think we put Massetti here. We move down. Mm, Medvedev to nine. But now I've got to take into account a bit of, bit of you know, that is one of the factors is clay court form uh, and past performances at Roland Garros. So, yeah, I think that's about right. We've got Zverev at nine, Struff at ten, Hatchinov, Paul, Lehetchka. Paul just made a final of a challenger recently. Murray won that challenger in the end. Uh, TFFA, I mean, Felix has just been. He pulled out of Madrid, to be honest, as well. I don't know if he's playing Rome. I think he is, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he's due to uh, Madrid. He no, he didn't play Madrid, sorry. He lost in three sets to Dusan Leovic. No surprise that he pulled out of uh, Monte Carlo. I mean, he's nowhere near. Uh, he needs some good wins. Uh, Lehechka as well has been pretty underwhelming on the clay. Uh, lost in the first round to Shevchenko. It got double breadsticked as well. Bosnia lost to Ketmanovic after a couple of good wins. And Monte Carlo lost in the round of 16. And then, you know, if we talk about... Um, we talk about Nori, because I want to know... Refresh myself. Madrid lost in the second round to Zhang. Two tiebreakers. Fine. Massetti ran a 16 loss. Monte Carlo first round surrender. I mean, pfft. yeah, I think that's about right. So this is our updated power rankings as of 9th of May 2023. Edition number three. I will be doing a final edition uh, in a week's time. Or so, and that will be going into Roland Garros. We've got Alcaraz at one. Now, you have to remember this is mainly based on current form with a dash and sprinkle of also, uh, you know, looking at their past results at Roland Garros and also uh, the year as well. So, Alcaraz at one, I think, is right. Two, Rublev, given that he's had some really good results, including a Masters 1000 title as well. Djokovic at three, mainly just because he hasn't played much tennis. I mean, if he goes on and does what I think he will do, which is potentially win Rome, then he goes up to two easily, um, depending on how Alcaraz does. If Alcaraz loses his first round, then he could even be one, but Alcaraz has a decent run, then I think, you know, Djokovic will probably be at two. Holger Runa at four. Five, we've got Stefano Tsitsipas, who was the Roland Garros final in 2021, or finalist, or even in 2021. Yannick Sinner at six, Taylor Fritz at seven, Lorenzo Massetti at eight, Alexander Zverev at nine, and Jan Lennon the finalist from Madrid recently, also made a quarterfinal of Monte Carlo, is at 10. Just outside, we've got Medvedev, Nori, Hatchinov, Paul, Lehechka, TFO, Felix Auger, Lassim. I just haven't changed that because, you know, those are players that I expect to do relatively well at Roland Garros, but uh, they just haven't really done it for me enough to be included in the top 10 in my opinion so let me know your thoughts though who have i missed have i missed someone as well and uh you know who, who would you change in terms of the ordering of one to ten as well thank you very much guys stay safe and well see you on the next video